Welcome traders to this week's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Just going to give it another 30 seconds here before we uh, get going. Uh, before I do so, can you just type a Y in the chat box if you can hear me loud and clear and you can also see the Tickmill um, welcome screen. Good stuff. Okay. Okay, so that's two o'clock UK time and uh, first of July, first month, first day of the new month, new quarter and second half of the year. So let's get going. Um, before we jump into today's discussion, important to just uh, adhere to the risk disclaimer, views and information expressed by me here today are solely mine, they're not representative or indicative of uh, those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, for those of you here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. So I basically get a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune uh, quite literally overnight in the markets. Um, so I had some time in my hands and I decided to explore my curiosity uh, for the markets, had some capital to play with and I started day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriately day gambling. Um, after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down to in losing positions, basically giving back all my gains and ultimately taking a significant six figure hit to my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is really an understatement. I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor uh, for 18 months to two years was a period during which I had not just my technical game in terms of developing uh, a strategy that suited, crucially suited my personality, uh, extensively back and forward testing uh, my strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But I guess most importantly during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal-orientated individual who was purely focused on financial gains to becoming a process-orientated individual. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of um, negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment, that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small stream of trades. My focus on the next hundred trades, because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered annual profitable returns since 2008. Uh, from since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service. And as you can see on the screen, I've been delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. My other, I guess, uh, passion project is uh, leading trading education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com, offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Now let's, uh, let's jump into the charts. There's a bunch to go through. I'm <coughs> predominantly gonna be working off the four hour time frames today. And we're gonna start 
with uh, the global equity benchmark, the S&P 500. And we are trading into, uh, and then the, this, this setup that I'm, I'm, we're looking at here in terms of this fifth wave extension, uh, you're gonna see this theme running through a bunch of these markets today. And when we're looking for these, uh, these fifth waves to complete, this one is actually taking the shape of a, a, an ending diagonal pattern. Um, but what we're ultimately looking for is for price to test into uh, the wave four extension, the FIB extension of this, uh, of this structure here, the 127 extension up to the 161. That gives a, a realistic window of where the majority of impulse legs actually complete. Uh, we also have another measuring tool, which I'll uh, highlight in, the, in subsequent charts. But really what we're looking for is this uh, 127 extension of 161. That's the window. What we've also got coming in here is obviously our ascending trend line. We tested into there this morning and had a pullback to test the pivot. We're bouncing now, um, but certainly I'm going to be watching for a break of this uh, ascending trend line support. So I'd like to see prices back through, <coughs> excuse me, 42.94 uh, to set short positions, initially targeting a move back into the midpoint of the channel here at 42.53. And then depending upon how the price action develops, we could start to think about targets in terms of um, weekly range support, 42.25, and then the trend line support all the way back down at 41.86. But we want to take it step by step and not get ahead of ourselves. First and foremost, we need to see this ascending trend line support eroded, and then we can start to think about uh, short positions in the S&P 500. Into the NASDAQ. <coughs> NASDAQ looking for prices to extend higher here into the uh, 14,715 area to complete this, uh, this sequence in the NASDAQ. And then again, what I've been looking for is a pullback. And certainly I, we can see this ascending trend line support would be the uh, the primary objective here, 14,455. From there, we may extend again in the NASDAQ uh, to new highs here because what we've got running along the top side here, if I zoom this data out, let it catch up. There we go. Uh, so we have this uh, trend line in play. This it will be the third touch of the trend line, which will take us up to that 15,200 level. And certainly from there, then I would be uh, really looking for uh, short positions to, uh, to see a move back down, really to test this break, prior breakout point initially, back down all the way to, to 14,000 there. So um, we'll have to see how the price action develops, but certainly I'll be paying attention to any test of this uh, ascending trend line resistance, 14,700 just above, 14,700 and change. And, uh, and that would be the op initial opportunity to, to fade this move, uh, certainly while we've got this momentum divergence in place. And, uh, and then we'll see how we trade if and when we get back down to uh, test the ascending trend line support. Dow Jones, <coughs> now the Dow has, uh, has tested, this is the trend line resistance which I was tracking here. We tested it, uh, we got a little bit of a sell off, uh, pulled back into the prior highs here. We're bouncing a bit again now. Really want to pay attention to a couple of closes back below this, um, this trend line resistance to uh, to get excited about uh, an opportunity on the short side it may be that what we're going to do now is pull up and retest this resistance level here uh, 34,800 and maybe from there we start to see uh, prices drift lower again paying attention to the fact we've got some nice momentum divergence in terms of the Dow we've got the DAX here DAX has this uh, and again another ending diagonal pattern so what we'd be looking for with the DAX is if we can trade through here, we'll extend this over. So we've got that 127 extension, which will be the initial target uh, for this move higher if it plays out. So I'll be anticipating we see something like this develop. And then from there, we should see uh, the sellers step back in again, especially uh, given the uh, significant momentum divergence we've got in play there. So keep an eye on 15,950 in terms of the DAX. <clears throat> Nikkei 225, uh, still the weakest of the bunch at the moment. And uh, there isn't really a, a setup as such to, uh, to pay attention to with Nikkei. The VIX, <clears throat> I posted this chart earlier. Um, the VIX is in a very interesting position. Uh, if we, 
I'll actually just jump out to the weekly chart here with the VIX. You can see we're sitting on a weekly trend line um, back through uh, November 20, uh, sorry, November 2017. We're at the third touch of that trend line, which I would anticipate will be an area where we could likely see a bit of a spike here in terms of volatility. So I'm looking for um, long positions, building position on, any, on prices below 15.50, uh, down to that uh, that 14, 14 level. And certainly I think we can see an extension here in the near term to the upside. And obviously this idea about the VIX having a bit of a spike here coincides with um, a potential for a bit of a pullback in terms of the equity markets. I'm not, once again, not in any way, shape or form predicting a crash, just simply a tradable correction uh, in what is a very strong bullish trend. So let's see how uh, how things develop in the VIX, but I'm, uh, I'm I'm on the long side of that, that trade, certainly. Uh, let's look at, this is the equal weighted dollar index. So this is the dollar index versus the euro, the yen, sterling, and the Aussie, all in equal weight. I was tracked last week looking for this pullback into, uh, into this trend line, uh, prior trend line resistance to act as support. We, uh, we're trading just above there. Now we're in what I think could be the fifth wave extension. So. When we're thinking about the, the fifth wave extension, like I said, what we're looking for is for price to test the 127 extension. So let's just draw, uh, I'm doing this, no. So this is, uh, this is the zone that we're looking for, ideally for a fifth wave to complete into. So in terms of uh, the actual wave structure here, we have, let's call this our one, two, this is our three, four, and we're looking for a fifth wave to complete ideally in this window. Now, another method, another tool we can use to help pinpoint uh, this area even clearer is measuring the wave one and overlaying it versus the wave four low. And you can see there, so now what we have, we have, some confidence developing here because we not only do we have the 127 extension and the 161 extension of the wave four, giving us a window between 119.22, 119.49, but we also have an equality objective versus our wave one structure coming in at 119.33. Additionally, here we have daily and weekly range resistance. So we traded ju just into, we touched to the tick basically that 127 and we've seen a, a little bit of a, a pullback here. What we'll, obviously what we'd want to watch for now to get additional confirmation, let me just get rid of the access on there. And we can remove this line, that's it. So what we can use now is a simple trend line to give us uh, the heads up so if we can break this trend line, get through daily range support here at the uh, 118.93 level, that would be the first indication that potentially this wave five structure is, is complete. Now that's gonna have an implication for the FX majors. We're gonna look at those in a minute. First of all, here's the, uh, the dollar index, the equal weighted dollar index. I've added some, uh, some time measurements in here as well. So when we're looking at, uh, again, for these, these patterns to complete, this was our, our last leg to the downside. And we, if we measure using a, the FIB uh, time extension tool that you can get on, uh, on TradingView here. So it's FIB time zone. So what we're looking at here is this, this basically represents uh, two thirds of the time, 61.8% retracement in, or extension, sorry, in time versus the amount of time it took for this decline to take place. More often than not, we'll see uh, corrective moves complete into that zone. And certainly we wouldn't want to see, uh, we wouldn't want to see this move extend above uh, the 100% extension in time, as that suggests potentially new trends in play. But what we're looking at here with this, uh, with this dollar now, um, again, we just bring in the trend line. So what we would want to see to suggest that we uh, potentially we've got a wave five high in place here, um, would be that uh, that we take out this trend line and roll over. Now we haven't we haven't reached the one two seven extension. 
Um, but what we have potentially got here is, is a double top scenario or what early wave practitioners would refer to as a failed fifth, um, whereby we get this double top. But no, we, don't we didn't get any divergence um, on this last high. So my, my sense is that we, we could see a pullback here, but we, I'd still prefer to see one more high here in terms of the dollar index giving us that momentum divergence then. So if prices extend back up into this, uh, this completion zone that I've highlighted, that would mean that we don't make a new high in terms of momentum. Uh, that would be the first heads up as uh, to suggest that we are seeing uh, this, at least this initial leg off the lows complete and then looking for a three-way corrective move, ideally back into the wave four low there at 91.50. We also again have that trend channel used as resistance now to act as support. Always, uh, they have a tendency to hold on the, the initial retest. So if we can get back down into this zone, um, then what I'm ultimately looking for is price to extend once more to test the equality objective versus the bigger structure. And that's um, this leg here, an A, B, C, 93.74 is what we'd be looking for. And if we can get into there, then uh, watching for potential bearish reversal patterns to, uh, to set shorts again, looking for new lows in the dollar would be the, uh, the play there. 10 year yields, <coughs> just drifting lower here at the moment uh, from the highs that we saw uh, at the end of March. And again, in terms of downside objectives for this move, we have an equality objective. So we tested into the equality objective and have bounced pretty strongly. So what I'd be anticipating now, certainly if the dollar is gonna pick up a little bit here, is that we, uh, we could see another leg higher here in terms of the yields. Uh, now, um, one thing that's gonna be driving that is, uh, is the jobs data tomorrow, because if, um, if we see the jobs data come in uh, week again, a third week print, um, then that's going to give the Fed cover um, and we probably see uh, probably see yields roll over from here. But if we get a strong jobs print tomorrow, so something significantly above consensus, so consensus I think at the moment is about 700k. So if we see something 900, pushing close to a million, um, then that would, that would remove the Fed's cover. At the moment, the Fed are posturing that Without a jobs recovery, uh, they, they, you know, the, the taper talk is simply that at the moment. But if we start to see a meaningful jobs recovery, and uh, then that, that tapering talk is going to, going to start to shift to actual uh, rate increase expectations, and that should drive uh, short-term yields, and that will have a significant implication uh, for the dollar. Gold. So I was looking for uh, fifth wave loads complete. So again, look, this is a good example. Let me just remove some of this stuff so you can see it a bit more clearly. So what we have here is, um, this is our potential wave four, and uh, let me move some of this and make it a bit clearer. And get rid of that. And we don't need those. We'll just keep these for now. So that's our wave four high there at 1795. And all I've done here to, again, to get a, a downside objective for the wave five is overlay the FIB tool versus our four, wave four high there. And our target zone is the 127 to 161 extension. We trade to the tick virtually um, into that 127 extension. And we're seeing a bit of an up uptick here now in gold. And so what we'd be looking for to suggest a a meaningful lowers in place would be a breach of this trend line resistance now. And then what we, what we would anticipate, because we've got this impulsive decline, we'd then be looking for, I'll just remove those, we'd then be looking at a minimum, a three wave corrective pattern, more often than not, they form into these type of inverse head and shoulder scenarios. And then what's, let me draw that. So up into that wave four high first retest back in here. And then we'd be looking for an extension to ultimately get us back into, at a minimum, 38.2% retracement of the prior decline. More often than not, it's, we, we see the 50% tested. But anything in this area then would, uh, would set up the potential for at least another attempt at the lows. Um, and really, we could only uh, start to get 
excited about gold on the long side if we can take out trend line resistance now uh, because even that comes even if we extend it up into the trend line that's still within the potential for reversal at 60 uh, 61.8 percent of trades with 78.6 so um but certainly the the correction is tradable once we've got that initial reaction high in place then we're looking for the, the next reaction low ideally we see this developing five waves and then a three wave pullback and then you can trade the, the C leg um, to the upside. So keeping an eye on gold here, want to see this trend line go. If we can't take out the trend line, then there is still the potential that we haven't completed to the downside yet. And what we'd be looking for then would be a move like this, probably testing into the, the close to the 61 point, uh, the 161 extension of the wave four. And then we'd, uh, we'd be looking again, uh, ideally maintaining obviously uh, momentum divergence to suggest we have a, a tradable low in place. So that's what I'm watching in terms of gold. Silver, similar story really uh, to gold. Again, potential for a, a failed fifth, uh, fifth wave here with that double bottom. And look what, again, what's important to, to monitor is are we getting significant divergence? And yeah, we have. And we've, we're actually now, in terms of silver, through that trend line resistance. So we could have a low in place here in terms of silver. So what's the structure that we look for? Well, maybe we get a test up here into the 2648. Let's change that. So what I've been looking for now with silver would be this type of pattern to develop. And then we get that uh, C wave correction that we can look to play once we have a reaction high and a reaction low in place. And again, you can use the momentum tool. I have the RSI stochastic here. What we'd be looking for is the next time the RSI stochastic rolls over back below uh, the 20 level, we wouldn't want to see a new low in price. So as long as we don't have that new low in price, uh, then we can look to play bullish reversal patterns for the quality objective versus the initial reaction structure off the lows. Crude, obviously, OPEC uh, headlines all over the place today. We're trading up into now the, uh, the top side of another potential, potential ending diagonal here. Um, let's measure up and see what we've got in terms of targets. So yeah, we're trading right into that um, 75.36, 76.23. Have we got momentum divergence? We have just about at this stage, but is still valid. So what we, again, what we'd be looking for there would be a reversal now back through, uh, certainly want to see 74.21 taken out, and then we can think about a retest of uh, 72.24. Uh, but again, this is a, a pretty much a news-driven move at the moment, and but still respecting uh, the levels in terms of identifying where we're likely to see a pause uh, or, or a refresh. Um, nothing to do in copper at the moment. I'd certainly, I'd watch copper at this area here. So this is a, an example of that uh, ABC structure. So we made, uh, we made a reaction low here. We had plenty of momentum divergence. We extended higher to put in a reaction high. We then did a three wave corrective move. One second. So you can see we have this move here in a three wave structure. So that gives us a reaction low. And now what we have, uh, note when we got down into this low, momentum was back below the 20, well, it was very low, but below 10, uh, but we didn't make that new low in price. And so that's giving you that first indication that potentially we're gonna see an extension higher. And what's up the target for that? Well, target is going to be the equality objective versus this structure here. So we're looking now for a potential test of 444.90. And then we've also got that, uh, that trend line resistance coming in there. Um, so we could be looking at something like this now before setting up for another attempt at the lows here. So you can see how you, you can start to build this out pretty methodically uh, as to where the opportunities are to play these corrections. Uh, Bitcoin. So again, Bitcoin broke. Uh, Let's just bring this here. So we, we took out the trend line resistance uh, from those, those prior highs. We, uh, we made a move through the, through the resistance. Now we're back in testing the monthly pivot, testing range support, and we're back below 
the, the 20 level on the RSI stochastic. So if we can get a bullish reversal pattern, uh, ideally now we want to see it tr take out 35, uh, uh, 35,211 on the upside. And then what we can do is measure that current move here. So if we get that, then we can be looking at the current range resistance really back up to 41,267 in terms of Bitcoin. The only one caveat I would suggest with this one is that technically we have made, uh, let's see if this tested. You can see we've tested the equality objective versus the actual spike down here um, and we're seeing a sell-off. So this is this is a little bit more ambiguous in terms of Bitcoin and we're certainly still you know in a downtrend um, and we've held that to the tick. So it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult there in terms of Bitcoin. We did get plenty of divergence into the low but uh, this is why in this instance, certainly you'd want to see this high exceeded before looking on, on the long side, because it could be now that Bitcoin is in uh, the first phase here of making an, another leg lower to complete uh, a five wave sequence. So this is where you have to just wait for some of these key levels to go before, uh, before entering the market. Dolly Yen. <laughs> So I'm looking, I was looking for the dollar yen to uh, test this ascending trend line resistance here. Um, we've got some momentum divergence developing. We're testing, uh, we're tested weekly and uh, daily range resistance. And we're seeing a bit of, uh, bit of weakness develop. So I mean, if, uh, if, if we can't make a new high here and we extend, let's say back into the midpoint of the channel and we get another rotation, another attempt higher, but fail, uh, fail to get a new high in price, but we do get momentum coming back above the, the 80 line, then that could be the signal that we, uh, we're going to see a bit of a deeper pullback here in terms of the dollar yen. Back looking at 110.25 uh, uh, would be the downside targets. But in, in terms of the ideal objective, what we'd like to see is the top side of this trend channel tested before looking to, uh, looking to get in on the short side. We've also got these prior highs over here. Let's load a bit more data. So the ideal scenario would be that we actually spike there and just run the stops before, uh, before rolling over. So we'll keep an eye on the dollar yen. <coughs> uh, Swissy has a nice uh, fifth wave pattern. So we traded 127 extension to the tip. We're now getting a rollover here. And so again, in terms of thinking about this as a trading opportunity, what we want to see now is the trend line go on a closing basis. And then that would, uh, that would give us sufficient confirmation that we have a wave five in place here on that 127 extension test. And what do we have down here? Lo and behold, some nice momentum divergence setting it up for us. Uh, Euro, Euro's come in, uh, again, potential failed fifth here because the actual downside objective um, here, let's bring this in. is that 127 extension and potentially the 161 where we've got weekly uh, range support, we've got the ascending trend line. So we'll see if the euro can break through uh, on a closing basis, this descending trend line resistance, then uh, we may have a failed fifth wave low in place. And, uh, and then we can start to think about the euro standing back up here and probably doing something like this before looking at those downside targets again. Um, Sterling. Similar scenario here, potential double bottom uh, because the, the objective to the downside hasn't been uh, tested. Let's bring this in. So we'd be looking for 137.27 to really complete this sequence. And again, uh, it's got a bit of work to do here. Let's just bring in a trend line and see. So although this, uh, it looks bullish, um, although it looks bullish at the moment, let me just redraw that. We've still got a bit of work to do uh, in terms of re eroding this trend line resistance. So we're just seeing a trend line support at the moment. So we could pop up here a little bit more and then see uh, another leg to the downside to complete the sequence before then seeing a bigger corrective move to correct this initial sequence off the highs. Similar story in the Aussie. 
potential double bottom, but note we don't have any momentum divergence. So statistically speaking, the, the probabilities uh, would favor that we, this, this actually, you know, we, we will see another leg lower here um, because we haven't got that momentum divergence. Oh, well, we've got a, a, a it's marginal, but it, it's, what, what, again, like I've said previously with these um, divergences, you really want them jumping off the screen at you to, uh, to give them credence. Uh, Kiwi. So the Kiwi looks like it's going to attempt to uh, do an ABC here. So let's let's measure this one up because this one has uh, has got potential. So whilst we hold uh, this reaction high, reaction low, so we can see the Kiwi now extend up into seventy one thirty six, and uh, you could probably do something like this. And then uh, looking for still looking for lower prices because we've got a downside target here on the Kiwi at 67.98. So um, that would be the play to watch in the Kiwi if we can hold this swing low at, uh, at 69.65. I'd certainly be interested in looking at short positions up into that 71. 36 area. Right guys, we've been running there for half an hour. That's, uh, that's the allotted time. Um, what I'll briefly do now is does anyone have any questions or any chart they'd like me to take a look at that I didn't, uh, didn't get a chance to review there. I went through some of them in a bit more detail just so you could see how you can identify these, uh, these structures and potential target zones in a, uh, in a methodical fashion. Equally, if you don't have a question, if you type an N in the chat box, so I know we're, uh, we're all on the same page and good to go. Good stuff. Thanks very much for your time, everyone, and, uh, and I hope you found this useful. Same time next week. Thanks very much.